during the 1920s for animals. Thank you. It feels good to be here this morning. I'm kind of surprised at what I ran into, but <laughs> that's quite a lie. I would like to this morning to start with the 26th hurricane. And I'm going to talk basically about 28th hurricane, but just to show you how life was back then and how unconcerned we were about hurricanes. Up to that time, there had never been a, a real bad one. In 1910 or 11, one went through that uh, scared a good many folks, but then there were not very many here then. I was originally here in Florida in 1913. We went back to Arizona and from Arizona, then we came back to Florida in 1925. So we came back just in time for the 26th and the 28th hurricane. The 26th hurricane was one that the, the lives were lost in Moorhaven, basically. And uh, I didn't live in Moorhaven. Of course, it's TV Farm, which is just this side of Lake Harbor. And uh, we had fun. We, uh, we went out and picked up fish because the wind blew all the water out of the lake on our side. Actually, uh, in all the potholes in the lake, if you can visualize, it's shoving all the water over like you take a pan and you blow hard enough to move all the water over to one side. Well, that's the way the lake was. On our side, the water was gone. And at the same time, we were having fun Folks in Moorhaven boot. And so this is the two sides of a hurricane. And uh, they had a pretty rough time there. There were lots of, lots of people that were lost in the 28th hurricane in Moorhaven. In the 26th. 26th, yeah. yes, thank you for that crack. Uh, you left keep track of <laughs> <laughs> But um, so yeah, we did live at South Bay for a period of time, but not being in Syrian Farm, and actually we were far enough uh, west that we were sort of in the edge, and not far enough in the edge that I just probably just passed over for a few minutes. But let me go back to the time coming up and what we did on the Sunday uh, of the hurricane. Uh, I had three brothers, and there was a, my Thomas family that lived there with us, our Charlie Thomas family, and I'm right close to it. But as boys, we got out and we'd make little propellers and put them on a stick and hold them up in the wind. And the wind finally, towards the evening, was blowing so hard that the propeller, you know, the end and start a fire with a stick. And uh, the propeller would burn and, and go right up on our stick that was turning so fast from the velocity of the wind. And uh, of course, we didn't, as kids, as I remember, not overly concerned, but I know my parents were. And uh, there's a fellow named uh, Thirst there, and he was a game warden, lived in a house right, not quite adjacent, but real close to us. And they decided things were getting bad. There, there was a little perimeter dike around the lake. And this perimeter dike was really not built to be a protection of any kind and probably too much concern, not much concern about that anyway. Well, this, <clears throat> this dike, the water kept building up and building up, and the dike probably at that time six or eight feet high at the very most. But the water built up and was getting close to the top of it, and the folks were getting concerned, so they <clears throat> gathered all the folks together and brought them into one building. And this was a thirst building. Sebring, when he was developing this farm, he built four of these large houses, and there were large, substantial, good homes, good houses. For that time, especially good for this area. And uh, so they decided to go into the thirst building, and we ended up having 42 black folks and 21 white folks that were in the building. And in the process of getting in, for some reason, the Booth family was about the last family to go up into the attic. And uh, I think we were probably slow to come over from what happened. So we were one of the last families. And, and the house shook enough on the foundation that, that I threw my hand out and the window had busted out right where we were going into the attic of the building. And uh, so I cut my hand on that. It's in uh, Lawrence Well's book. Uh, here, that's one of the things 
group got in there, but I got my hand on that, and I still, many of you want to see the scar, I'll show it, but I did learn the scars gradually grew out. They used to be large and not smaller. I guess we keep losing some of them. But <clears throat> we all got into the attic, a whole group, as I said. Well, uh, Charlie Thomas, that's Mutt Thomas' dad, uh, he had taken an ax into the attic with him because he had think he sensed we might have to go through the roof. And uh, <clears throat> I can remember sitting, and I was near enough where I could put my foot through the, the whole attic hole and touch the water. And the house was about three feet off of the ground, and the, it had the, at least eight foot walls, you know, or eight foot ceilings, because it didn't build this little ceiling house or something. And uh, I could touch the water with my foot before the house went down. Well, actually, the house became buoyant and uh, was floating, and so it floated back into what is 27. They were just building 27. It was not completed. It was not completed with all the bridges, so it couldn't be used. And actually, my brother, Bill Raw, our half-brother, Bill Raw, living in South Bay, uh, he had he came to Lake Harbor and told us that we had to come on back to South Bay or should because of this hurricane. And we were probably going clear, clear out, went up mid part of the state or somewhere. But uh, Grady Norton, I believe, was the weatherman at that time, and, and I'm not reflecting on him, at him any because back then, you know, recording persons and knowing where we were going to go, that was just impossible. But it didn't look like it was going to come across Florida. So as slow as communication was, why uh, the word came out that it looked like it wasn't going to hit. Well, our brother had come and got us, and we were in South Bay. And uh, then we decided, well, everything's fine, so we'll go back to Saving Farm. We went back then to Saving Farm. So then the time that finally the word came in by radio again, that it uh, looked bad that the hurricane meant it hit, it's too late. So we, that's how we spent the day in the, and went through the hurricane in the ceiling farms. And um, in the building, of course, uh, all of you may wonder what, what goes on in, in a case like that, but it got to floating, and it floated back into what is 27 now. And when the building hit it, it, it shook it pretty bad because, I don't know, it was probably moving an hour to an hour, and uh, it settled back, and about two more bumps against 27, and all of a sudden it was down. And um, everybody that was in it, the, the 42 blacks and the 21 whites, were all struggling for their life. And, and I can remember flashlights. Um, everybody that could have one had a flashlight. Well, they could see the rays of the flashlight in the, in the water for a few moments. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember swimming one stroke in the, in the hurt, not, not one stroke. And I ended up on a little tiny piece of ceiling that somehow when the building came apart had gotten twisted over so that the smooth part, which is the ceiling part, was on, turned up on top. And uh, I thought that's all I was on. And uh, it was a little bit difficult to hang on because it had the smooth top, and, and I had to keep my head in the hurt, in the end of the wind all the time. And uh, I don't know if any of you, I think they say the wind got up close to 160, 40, 60. But it, was, it was pretty fast, and the water is all traveling horizontally. It's, it doesn't come down on you, it's horizontal. And, and the wind picks up water off of the water until you just have a, just almost a mass of water that's moving by it. And uh, to, to breathe, I had to keep my head turned away from the wind on this. And I'd go around and around, and I'd hold the edge that that's a little bit of platform. Well, it was a pretty long evening and night. And uh, as I said, I think we were just barely in the edge of the eye, because I remember one time, uh, not knowing that there was such a thing, but I, but I remember that I thought it seemed to get calm for a bit. And uh, calm enough that I think you could even see in the sky, I didn't look too bad.
bad, but it was nighttime and uh, very dark. And it basically, it's, it's a nice dark. But when it's filled with water and, and covered with clouds, it's sure enough dark. And uh, we settled down after a while, but I could tell that it wasn't moving because it quit spinning. And uh, of course, I, I was waiting for daylight there. And uh, I thought I was all by myself. This is one of the strange things that happens, you know. But, uh, in the morning, just just a few minutes before daylight, I'd say, well, I heard somebody groom. And, uh, Everything else was wiped out. Yeah. I may be a little bit wrong there. There may be a little shack that was down right near the road that didn't move. But everything, the, all of the houses were gone. How did you build, you said it was an avocado farm. Was that at that time? Uh, well, they had had their trouble with the floods and all, and, and most of the trees had been grounded, and actually they were abandoning it. And uh, we were running part of that property and actually farming it. But, there were avocado trees right around the, the uh, houses there. And so uh, those those four big houses? There were the four, trees. I believe four big, I'm sure they were, four big houses. There that were wiped away? And then there other sheds and barns and so forth related to farm operations. Yeah. And um, so we decided, well, <coughs> instead of 
instead of going to Sibian Farm, uh, we would head to Lake Harbor, which, of course, we were walking northwest. Uh, we had to go a little more west to get to Lake Harbor. And uh, so we headed for that, and we just got out walking good. Somebody hollered, and we looked back, and here came Mud Thomas. It was actually Charles Ashton Thomas, who's his right name, but but uh, nobody would know him by that. They didn't know him about Mud Thomas. How old was he? He's younger than I am, so I would, I would say now you if he ever sees this. <laughs> that maybe this is an estimate, right? <laughs>
no food in particular, but apparently they'd gotten a little. I remember they gave us boys something to eat, and we slept that one night there. I could be a little bit wrong. No, you could get a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I can remember us having enough that we weren't hurting for eating anyway. And uh, so on Monday morning, well, I believe it would be Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, my brother, uh, Bill Law, had gotten a boat and he came to Lake Harbor to uh, look for us, of course, because we haven't been separated. And, and uh, he found us at the hotel. And the fact is, he had word that the, some of us there, some of the folks that were going out. So he came and got us in a boat. And, and actually, we were riding, we were traveling in the canal, which removed the muck and the rock to build the old 27. And, uh, and they'd be like, throughout uh, in history, you need to turn off the new 27 wherever you can and take the old 27 and uh, go on to Lake Harbor to the old 27. And it might be interesting, well, no, I'll, yeah, I better say it, I'll forget it, but uh, before the hurricane, I, my dad had a contract with the state for keeping the road up. Well, the road, really, the state road department this, but uh, it was no rule, basically. It was just a right away, and you know, just like people travel out and go somewhere they have to stay on a section line. But uh, I drove that with a fortune tractor uh, three times a week, and of course, it paid my dad. We had the tractor in the drag, but it was a drag, you know. And uh, so, this was all the, all the original or right away, the roadway until. They were building or finished this road 27 in the road. But we were traveling in the canal where they removed that rock and rock. And uh, as we come down, I don't remember because I, I guess you just, you, you're concerned and you see, but, but uh, a lot of people are not as fortunate. Really? Yeah. You saw people who had died along the canal? <coughs> along the canal, uh -huh. along the, the road bank and, and uh, the canal, various other places. I probably uh, coming in the, into uh, South Bay, probably a dozen people or more. Oh, my so. goodness. Uh -huh. Well, you get a lot of pictures from the book, I think. Yeah, I know. Uh, and the newspaper articles, too. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> so we saw that, and we got to uh, South Bay, but then uh, they had managed to clear the road so that you could get the bell blade and it's pretty badly strewn as you've always seen the pictures. And uh, some of the bridges floating out, floated out, I know, because I remember after we came back to Bell Glade, uh, there were still bridges that hadn't been picked up or anything that floated out. And, uh, but we got to Belle Glade, and, and uh, in Belle Glade, why, why everybody that was coming, you know, from anywhere, why, they passed by Dr. Buck. You ever heard of Dr. Yes, Buck? Yes, we've heard yeah, of Dr. Buck. Yeah, we about Dr. Buck last <laughs> yeah. week. Well, uh, you kids be interested in this. I imagine the doctors brought most of you into the world, maybe not all of you. But uh, my dad uh, was a doctor. He wasn't a doctor, but he delivered and helped. Really? And, uh, so no doctor had ever touched my me from the time I was born until I was 14. I'd never been sick, uh, had no problem. And uh, on a hip, <coughs> well, I made by doctor said, well, anybody got any hurts, any, any damage, he was an old army doctor. <laughs> he was rough. And uh, I said, well, I got a cut. My other brother, one of my brothers, you know, had the hurt too. And, and so he just took pure old, that old brown, red iodine, you know, and he just swapped it out good and put a band on it, on it, and I said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard he had a primitive method. <laughs> yeah, he was good, though. He was a good, and he was See, everything we've heard of him, but he was really good. He never turned to anybody. I don't believe it. They couldn't pay him. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was good. I can't say too much for him. Yeah. And I talked to my brother, and and we were more or less in the later group to go to, to the East Coast because we were being at, we were at Lake Harbor, see, and, and we had to wait for my brother to come in and pick us up and, and take us. So we got to go in in a, in a, in a dump truck. We, go, we rode in the, the coast, and when we got in there, why, they didn't have any place, so there seemed to be some confusion about where we were supposed to go, but anyway, we ended up in Hollywood, and Hollywood 
got so many who were pouring in there because that's where they were sending them until they set up and took care of them in Hollywood until <clears throat> we could make arrangements and to go somewhere else. Where did you stay when you were in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. You were asking me, wait, we stay, I, we stayed in a building in Hollywood. It was some kind of, maybe a school or something. Um, but something the Red around. Cross had set up? Uh, yes, ma'am. And they, you know, because they, they did open on West Palm Beach and that's in the church and I haven't been that It was open to the folks if we would have known it. Mm -hmm. but we didn't, we didn't know it. We followed the crowd. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so we stayed there a little while and then got a place in, West Palm Beach and lived, and my brother Bill Rawl and my oldest brother came back to the place and, and helped put this thing up for us. Well, in fact, Bill Rawl never did go in, but <coughs> he had, they, they worked in the thing up, and, and that was a bad job for anyone. And after I've told you a pretty gruesome story, I, I would like to tell you some, some funny things that did happen in it, <coughs> one or two, anyway. Uh, you know, they had the, the uh, American Legion came in, and, and then part of the, uh, the uh, Sal Salvation uh, Army and the Red Cross. Well, or? they were all getting in, you know, eventually. But then <clears throat> among the them working, they were having problems with animals, so it was like we were supposed to kill any animal that, that was around them. And uh, so. <clears throat> It was just one little dog came up, and there were two of the men there, and they had, both of them had guns, but one of them even had a ball bat. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one says to the one, says, you got to shoot the dog. He said, my gun's empty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, you don't have to shoot <laughs> And he said, well, my gun, he flipped his barrel around, you know, he said, my gun's empty too. And uh, so I looked at the dog, and, there's one with a ball bat, he said, I don't know what we'll do. We'll hide him for a while and then uh, let him out. So he lifted the lid on an empty coffin and put it in. <laughs> and there was a, a black gentleman that was walking along. <laughs> he hears the, the noise in the coffin. <laughs> I got to give him credit because, you know, he, he, he's up to the left coffin there and he, he raised the lid. <laughs> Yeah. 
charges. I think two of them had kind of half sunk or something. Or, and uh, these same pieces of equipment well, I, I worked on later when they built the Hoover Dyke. Uh, we dynamited it. We moved down to this side of Cliston. And uh, we started dynamiting, which is in the area of Lake Harbor, right where we used to live. And uh, we built uh, there. And of course, there were other rigs there. They should change and all. But credited the building of the dike in 1961. Or I guess they call it completed by that time. But if any of you are worried now, I don't be worried because I think with the large canals and, and the dike high enough to let a great build up in water, that uh, the water will go back to the undertow, see? And that's the reason the lake's so dangerous because there's no, it was originally no, no depth for undertow to flow back into the lake. And there's no dike either to hold it, basically. Yeah. I've enjoyed being with you all. Now, what was the question that you had, Mrs. Campbell? Yeah. Um, about. Uh, there's some water there if you'd like to have a drink of water. Okay. Uh, about the house that floated away. Oh, the, the bridge house. And right. Oh, it's yeah. a historical like, site now. Did you see that? You know, as you drive along, there's a marker there that says it's a historical site. Yes, ma'am. It, it, it is returned, and, and they're taking care of it. I believe it's. Do you know where it floated to? Uh, well, about. I remember. I remember looking, and I. It wasn't too far. I don't think out. It went across the canal. Uh, actually, I think it was Canal Creek, and maybe even two canals. But at least it went across the one major canal. There. And my brother's house in South Bay floated uh, about three quarters of a mile. And uh, another house, the Willett House home, which was beside them, it went, it went uh, just across the, well, let me see, that's the North New River Canal, which is the canal going to South Bay. Mm -hmm. It just crossed it. It was stucco, so it was heavier. It didn't go as far as my brother's house. Well, what did they do with those houses once the hurricane was over? Did they, they move them back on the foundation or what? They tore nearly all of them were torn down. And my brother's house was, was not very old and, and uh, very little damage to it, but then it was so far and it got on muck ground and, and it cost so much so we just tore it down and used what lumber you could in a new one. Uh -huh. What things are still there that made it through the hurricane? <clears throat> in South Bay? Any of this or in Lake Harbor? Area. Okay, well, in, uh, Lake Harbor, I mean, at the Civic Farm, there's very little left. And then Lake Harbor. Are those Harbor, big palm trees up. that you talked about still there that your father planted? Uh, no, you know, I don't know what happened. Uh, Charlie Thomas farmed that same land, and then uh, one of his sons. And there are trees there from those trees, but the original mm -hmm. trees, see, they, they would be pretty old. Mm -hmm. And they were monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were big trees. They were big trees. What about in Lake Harbor? Was the post office there then? Uh, you know, I don't believe that Lake Harbor had a post office then. Uh -huh. So transportation was very hard to get in. Well, like I mentioned, you know, I drug the road. And so when I get out dragging the road, now people only travel basically through there. They were either ignorant or really had to go. <laughs> and uh, I can remember that on the tractor, it was the old portion steel wheel tractor. You all are seeing this as uh, antiques now, maybe, but uh, that's what we use for dragging. And I can remember, I'll tell you this one particular story, one night, <coughs> and the mosquitoes got bad then. Uh, we think it'd get bad now, you know, and they call man spray spray. We don't have any mosquitoes. I've seen them so that on my dad's back, you can touch his back, or on the screen door, you could hardly see out of it if they were so thick. And, uh, well, now, what was he going to say? About the force and tractor? Oh, yes. And uh, so I was one that drove it most of the time. And this one time, we had had rainy weather, and, and then folks get stuck. And so I ran on to this fellow that had 
then when it come to the end of the rope, you know why it was stretched, and then just kind of jump him out. They do that now for fun, but... <laughs> it wasn't fun. <laughs> that so wasn't fun. He, this fellow, was so glad to get out, and now uh, this was way back when, you know, he gave me $20. That was the mm -hmm. biggest tip I ever got. That was a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, that's a bunch of money. Tremendous amount of money. He was glad. <laughs> So you don't think there are any uh, buildings that are still in Lake Harbor besides the uh, bridge house that were there during the hurricane? I would before? say that that's about all. Mm -hmm. There are not very many in South Bay. The old, uh, the old uh, Friends building, not Friends, uh, Denton building, may be still standing in South Bay. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the original buildings there. Denton.
they ran day and night on on that uh, area of developing and flying the land there. You know, my memory, I forgot what was my point. You're going to tell a joke. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I sure need this help. When they see this film, they say, boy, that's, well, I, <coughs> don't tell them how old I am. Uh, no, uh, it's wonderful. Yes. Uh, well, I was out there working. I had an old model A, and I'd drive out to the area where I was working, and he had a little bitty house out there. And really what I'd do, I would stay out there most of the time, because the other fellow had no place to live. Just I had a light out on my model of T baby. And uh, I was going through Bell Blade and Arthur Wells was there and they of course had to have one policeman at least by them. And when this policeman stopped me and he said, I believe I'm gonna have to take you in for a running with just one light. I said, Oh well, I didn't know I just had one light. He said, Well, he said I I guess I better take you in and I said, Well I'll tell you what you do. Before you take me in, you call Mr. Wells and tell him that, that you have Ernie Boots and, <clears throat> and that uh, he's driving without a, one light and that you need to take me in. And man, <clears throat> he would have given him another light. He would give him <laughs> and I said, because I'm supposed to be out there driving a tractor for him in just a few minutes. And uh, so here we go. This is politics. At its finest. At <laughs> its finest, yes. But Arthur Wells was, was really a good man, and he would have owned, I think, most of the place if he, you know, would have done things just a little bit different. But he really was a big farmer, son, and he had a lot of acres of beans. Yeah, because now there's a man that owns it. Um, his name is John Evans. John Evans. The Evans family. They say he's really rich. John L. Evans? John Evans. Young yeah. Evans. Oh, the Young Evans? Yes. Oh, well, now he actually farmed with uh, his dad, John Evans, the one you're speaking of now. His dad was John L. Evans, and Evans farmed with Mutt Thomas. And uh, was joint, joint farming with, with Mutt Thomas and Billy Rogers. When we moved there, we moved there because John Evans, he raised us about five or six acres of land. And when we started plowing it, we found all kinds of bottles and coins. And I even found a gold watch. Just had so many different well, you know, things in it. know why? Because they just folks just like us when we were living in Stephen Farm and, and the earth and there, we lost everything. Of what we had on our bike was all, and we had trunks of stuff. And, you know, valuable stuff, some of it, and uh, everything was lost, <coughs> wherever it busted up and wherever it fell out. And yeah. there's still things out there that nobody's found yet. There's oh, still yeah. Well, even probably people. People, 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 people. They said for years and years when they would plow, uh, plow their field, they had to plow for a while there until it was fine. Right. We leave in front of this tank that the front of said was that goes on coffins. Really? Yeah. It's about Well, yeah. you need to bring us things. Yeah. I want to see them. Because yeah. we found... We like, need to go to your house and dig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We found Coca-Cola bottles about that big. And yeah, an old oh, bottle you, Coca-Cola You need to bring us to France. Yeah, yeah we need to donate some. Yeah. For our, we're going to have a little museum. We have an open house at the end of the year. And we've done a lot, so much, all our classes, so much research and, and, and everything. We're going to have a little museum at the end of the year where we have a lot of these kinds of things to show yeah, you. And also, there's one big, humongous tree, and under it, there's about four or five real old cars stacked up. And in the big garage, there's one that only needs a little bit of fixing up. It'll be great. Mm. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit more about Arthur Wells. Do you know the <clears throat> well, in the glades, and, you know, the water was set to drink really, and if you drilled a well, you got salty water, and it was pretty cold, and then if you went deep, you got salty water, and uh, that's generally true in that area now. And uh, Arthur Wells, at one time, and I'm sure that uh, he won't mind me telling you this, because it's the best he could do, but you had to 
water tanks, it would be about oh, 12, 15 feet across and five, six, plus seven, eight feet high, 10 feet high, just according to how large. And I know when I first knew Arthur Wells in 1925, he was living <coughs> in a water tank, he didn't know what. At Bean City, where Bean City is now, he's living in a water tank. Okay. There's a big water tank like that, there's a big hole in it. They go on the top of my business. <laughs> 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 I thought it was so cool. But he lived in a, in a town. But people, you know, when they come in there, there was nothing. I, the Layfield family, which is a prominent family at uh, Lake Harbor, so when they came in here, uh, us were living at Sebring Farm, and there was a little old shack out back of where we were living there. And I mean, it was open in the front. One side of it was completely open, the ends closed in in the back, and uh, the Layfield, Mr. and Mrs. Layfield, now this is the elder, senior, so they spent two or three weeks there until they were able to get some for else to live. Of course, they ended up farming there in the harbor and, and building a nice home there. They had all of you kids, well, now they had some of the children when they stayed there, so they were about to go someplace. Mm -hmm. True pioneers. That's True it. We, they have pioneers. discovered is that we were, you know, the West was was uh, settled. We think about that as being the last pioneers, really, when you think about the covered wagons and things. But I think what we've discovered from what we've studied and the people we've talked to is that we were the last pioneers. The people that came here and settled right here, here mm -hmm. were the last pioneers. This is the last pioneers. And you know that uh, this generation or the gen generation of these pioneers will almost live until they see the muck. So, yeah, that's interesting. Now, there's been so much discussion about that and and uh, pros and cons of what's happening, but I can remember even one place, the muck height in 1916 on this area. And that muck now, how many years ago would that be? 1916, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, and there is where I know that the muck was seven and eight feet is down now to where we have hardly enough for the farm. And so I look for it to gradually have to start phasing out from a farming standpoint certain areas of the muck. Now I think for the population and all, they can go in there and build your homes. Well, <coughs> more haven uh, it used to be muck I talked about in the 26 hurricane. All the muck, muck, muck was everywhere I know. It was all over the land. There was no muck on the land now except the very deepest. Well, that's the same thing that was happening here. And there's no way to stop it but to cover it with water. So, but thankfully, uh, there will be hardly any muck there. Muck is deeper over in the canal point area than it is around this area. But I can take you to acres.
sugar mill area, but on the canal. We went down there that far with barge, and then we had to hook tractors onto the barge and pull it to live in. I have living quarters when we got where we were going to work. And we were about actually 16 miles below what is Oakland. And it took us nearly a month to get the barge down there because of the high sun. We had tractors each side of the canal. We pulled it a high sun, which is where they stop it. Then we'd take a big logging saw and cut in at one corner of the barge, and they gradually start opening up. And we could look down and see the rock where it would push the mud away and finally fill with water, and then, you know, so we could go some more. And after we got down there, it's a thing. But it averaged me killing myself, not counting what the other men killed, but as many as 10 to 12 moccasins a day. They're, they were so thick, they were everywhere. And we would be cutting lines and we're surveying and so forth. And at night, where we finally ended up with a barge to, that we were living on, we could look out, we'd run an opening from our passage, which went where the road would be. And we run an area down so we could look from the canal out to that area. And we would just watch out there and see the bobcats go by. Just regular clockwork. And uh, I remember a time when we had a tractor that we did keep one of the two tractors down there that we traveled with. And a little tiny fitting, an eighth inch, 90 degree L copper tooth fitting broke on it. And uh, so <clears throat> somebody was going to have to walk because our transportation was down. And so we draw, drew straws to see who would get to, to walk from there <laughs> to, to Belle Blade or South Bay and get that fitting and come mm -hmm. back. It wasn't the winner, though, right? <laughs> nope. The winner was the loser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the winner was the loser. And it was two boys, Eugene Goodwill, which were old residents, and, uh, and, Mar and uh, Marshall Lawson, which Mark Fishcamp. Right. They got the best fellow. Uh -huh. No, I'm wrong. Did I say Eugene? Uh-huh. That's right. It was Eugene and Mark. I'll come, I'll come back to that. And Eugene scared to death of anything on hold. Mark wasn't. They had to walk in and, and they saw these eyes falling and uh -huh. they flash flies. And there are panthers. You know, here the panthers are trying to save, which I agree with. Them. But and this was a panther it had to be that it got to follow him. And so they followed him until it almost got to Oklahoma, I think, before finally they lost it and it was getting daylight. What they had to do, they had to get out so early they, they could go and walk out, get the park, and walk back that day. And uh, but I thought that was interesting. I was fortunate enough I didn't have to make the trip. <laughs> but, but, there were lots of alligators then. Oh yes, ma'am. We were we would do part of our travel in the canal. They had a kicker and lots and lots of times when the water was down very low, say two, four feet in the canal. But and we would run along with the boat and the alligators would uh, swim along beside the boat. Now, so we had to cut high since they weren't in all areas. They were part of there, but they were open areas. And, and we'd run along and I've seen alligators six, seven feet long trying to travel, you know, we get away from the boat because it sank on both sides, there wasn't much, much room for both of us. And uh, they would travel along the other. Finally, they'd just give up and take off to the bank or something. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question about Indians, too. Did you see, were, were there a lot of Seminole Indians uh, around, or were they more of uh, the Okeechobee? Well, they had moved out of the glades area pretty well, I think. The last, well, the last battle or last really activity uh, for the Indians was on Red Island. That is an island that's just off of Lake Harbor, you know. And uh, in fact, I have my youngest brother that I was telling you about, the one who got the head the nail in his hand. He was born on Red Island and, uh, when we were here the first time. And he's the only Asian, I guess you could say, that have been born have been Indians and, and black have been born there. But he's on Red Island? White South, white, I guess you call it Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So there were Indians on Red Island? Well, <coughs> no, what I was going to say at the north west corner of the island, mm -hmm. there were lots of skeletons. And I got to ask him questions. This kid, you know, going out fishing and swimming and so forth. Uh, Skeletons. I got to ask him about it, and that's where one of the battles were. And the, the soldiers drove the Indians off the island at that one corner of the island. Oh. Um, so. Spanish soldiers, American soldiers, American, American, American. American. No, that's when they were battling, having the 
down was above me. And uh, you remember something about in, in the 26th hurricane, if you're reading that, that we'd had a real bad dry spell before that. Well, it was before that. And uh, so I think that it was ground that opened up. But, you know, if you take moisture out of it, it just keeps it. like a sinkhole. And, and it was uh, just like a sinkhole. It was wide as top, and then goes to zero at the bottom. But I went down, and the kids had to come get me out. Oh, my word. A lot, did a lot of people just clear the custard apple trees off because there really wasn't much you could do with them? No, you couldn't do anything but in this farm. Yeah, land clearing, base clearing. There was, when you get down to acres, there's probably a lot of acres that could take the whole land mass. It faded out from the edge of the lake. Good soil is a custard apple tree. It was all trapped by those roots. We looked for some, we wanted the kids, the younger kids were uh, real interested in them last year, and we wanted to take them to actually see some. There's some new ones up in front of the Chamber of Commerce, but they didn't want to see any new ones. They wanted to see some that were old and had seen some history. And so the only ones we could really find where there was a, a, a lot of them were up at Crooked Hook Campground on the way to Cluiston. Up on your left as you're going to Cluiston. There's a little lake there. And around the lake, there are some old ones. And that's about the only yeah. real old ones. I don't know. One big they There's a big one in Mr. Salvatore's yard. You know Carmen Salvatore in Pahokee? Yes, ma'am. He has a huge old one in his front yard that he took us to. He said it's 90 years old. Well, it would have to be. It's one of them. Is it the only one? Of it? I, I think so. Around. He gave us some apples from it about, what, about six weeks ago, a month ago. Yeah. They taste awful. They smell <laughs> wonderful, though. They taste they good. Do. They do smell pretty good. If they're right, just right, they're Oh, well, sure, I'm not there, I guess. Yeah, they smell so good. We had them in the room for a while, and it was, it was wonderful. But they, they have, they were a little bit, what, tart, tangy, 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 tangy taste to them. Yeah. I it wonder if you could do anything with the seeds. Do you mean grow up? No, but, I mean, you there's so many seeds inside of the apple. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think you could do that. I think people tried and just gave up. Well, you know, you're talking about the touch of the apple land, and I, well, it was after the 28 hurricane that this happened, and I didn't know it until uh, 40, probably about 45, 1945. Uh, Sam Lovell, mm -hmm. so the, uh, well, he was a teacher for ag, and uh, so Wedgers, I worked for Wedgers, and, and the land was so unlevel they could hardly farm. Well, we agreed to help them level it. You know, the farmers they would help them out in there. Right. And uh, so <clears throat> I was in charge of the work at Wakers, and we gave them equipment. Well, I could take it out there, and I looked at it. And you know there were areas out there, and this is along off of the lake now, like uh, 715, where it goes there, on the left side of that. There were areas there that had floated out to the rock. Uh, a whole section, maybe as big as this room, or well, there's some of them even larger, that came right up out of the ground, floated up, and moved. Mm -hmm. like a land area? Uh, I imagine we could still find some of them in an area. I'll take a look out at Out off Coker Highway, out of that, way, that area? Well, um, yeah, so I think it's a little bit below, you know, a little bit north. Kind of where they farmed, where the, where yeah. the Glade Central's farm the was, the Glade High's farm was. Right. What they could have done is fill them in, just to have it for farmland, say, but but I could have come up out of it. And we, the leveling that we did for the farmers, mm -hmm. FFA boys, uh, we didn't fill up those big boys. We just left them, and there was cat tails going in. Were these the lakes that John Hooker talked about that were left after the storm? He That's said that after the 28th storm, there were a lot of big lake, like what they call them, hurricane lakes? Or Is that what he had a name for lake? them. And well, they just bunch of the places that you know. Well, that's what. But there's the only area that I know of. But there was a bunch of. Yeah, he talked about them out. Um, I guess off Hooker Highway. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it's right. Right in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, well, it's I hard to believe. Well, I to notice them. Well, I know they noticed them, but why they got there? But they just they had to float out because uh, that was the old country apple land there. Yeah. Does anybody else have a question? Given such good information.
information. We really have. Well, I have one more question. Maybe this is these people. When, did you go to school in, in Lake Harbor? Was there a school in Lake Harbor? Yes, ma'am. There was a school in Lake Harbor, and I went to school there for the 28th Not very long, but I did go to school there. Yes, sir. In Lake Harbor, you a um, long time over there. Any stores or things like that? Stores? Or yes, they had one store there. It was uh, Mavis. Uh, store. Now, uh, it was, I don't know if it was there at the, the hurricane time or not, but they had a store there for years and years. Yes? Was there any sugar cane growing? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Was there any sugar cane growing? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, Shawanson, Mark Shawanson, which was mentioned, they had, uh, what they grew was chewable type, I'd be interested in that kind, but real soft and real good, but the U.S. Sugar Corporation had uh, that sugar cane in fact, in good many areas, particularly around Cluston and, and in other areas there at the time. Did you need a lot of stitches for that cut you had in your hand? I'm sorry. Did your brother need a lot of stitches for the cut he had in his hand? Oh, no. It was exactly a puncture. Oh. A nail went 